rays, or at least the cosmic rays which are relevant for climate, uh, are high energy particles coming from supernova remnants. Uh, supernovae are the explosive death of um, massive stars, stars which are roughly eight times uh, the mass of the, of the sun, die in big explosions. And uh, during those explosions, uh, the outer shells of the stars are uh, blown away at velocities which can be typically a tenth the speed of light. Mm -hmm. And uh, those explosions accelerate um, cosmic uh, particles to high energies. Those uh, particles can then uh, diffuse in the Milky Way, like uh, dye in water or, or something like that. And they can penetrate the, 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 uh, the solar system. Mm -hmm. And uh, because they come at a high enough energy, they can penetrate the atmosphere and reach the bottom part of the atmosphere. A cosmic rays, um, a, if they come at a high enough energy, they can penetrate the atmosphere and they can ionize it. Um, and it turns out that those ions uh, play an important role in the nucleation and growth of the cloud condensation nuclei. Mm -hmm. um, what happens then is that when you then do form clouds, when you reach 100% humidity and form clouds, if you have more of those uh, cloud condensation nuclei because you have more of the cosmic rays, uh, you will tend to get clouds which are whiter. Mm -hmm. They're going to be whiter for uh, two reasons. One is that uh, they, reflect, uh, they uh, reflect more of the sunlight, and the other is that uh, they can live longer, mm -hmm. um, and there are also a lot uh, or a few other effects as well. Uh, if you increase the cloud cover because you increase the cosmic ray flux, you will reflect more of the sunlight, and therefore uh, you will cool the planet. Uh, first of all, you can measure the uh, cosmic ray flux uh, with uh, devices on Earth, and this has been done since uh, the 1930s. So we can see exactly what the cosmic ray flux has been since then at different energies, and we can see how it's modulated uh, by the sun. And this part is actually understood to a lot. Uh, it, it's very well understood. Um, a, your question is how can we see that cosmic ray flux uh, affect the climate or so affect mm -hmm. the cloud cover? Um, over the 11-year solar cycle, we can uh, directly measure changes in the cosmic ray flux, and then we can see the cloud cover with satellite data, and we can see how both uh, change together. Uh, this by itself doesn't necessarily prove that it's the cosmic ray flux, because uh, we can have the sun affecting the cosmic ray flux, because we know it does, and we have the sun affecting the climate and therefore the cloud cover may be through some other mechanism, mm -hmm. that would give us a correlation that n will not necessarily imply causation between cosmic ray flux and cloud cover. So to see that, to see that cosmic rays affect the climate, we need variations in the cosmic ray flux which are not associated with, with other variables uh, modulated by the sun. So one way of doing it is looking on very short time scales. On uh, time scales of days, you can sometimes have eruptions or uh, gusts in the solar wind. Mm -hmm. And as a consequence, uh, for several days, you have then a reduction in the cosmic ray flux reaching the Earth. Mm -hmm. uh, these uh, events are called Fobush decreases. And during those events, or following those events, you can see a reduction in the number of aerosols over the oceans and uh, a change in various cloud uh, parameters as uh, measured by different uh, satellite data sets. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. Another thing you can do is look on very long uh, time scales where you have cosmic ray flux variations which are not associated with solar activity at all. Mm -hmm. And that's because the environment around the solar system changes. Uh, it turns out that the largest variation uh, in the cosmic ray flux is due to our uh, passages through the spiral arms of the galaxy. Mm -hmm. Every so often we pass through spiral arms of the galaxy, which are regions where we have more star formation and therefore more supernova re uh, remnants and therefore more acceleration of cosmic rays. Um, and uh, every time we pass such spiral arms of the galaxy, which happens around every 150 million years, our environment around the solar system is bathed with significantly, uh, uh, with a larger flux of cosmic rays. Now, uh, 
you can reconstruct the cosmic wave flux by looking at uh, iron meteorites. And you can see over the past billion years, seven periods of uh, oscillation of the cosmic wave flux due to the passages of the spiral arm. Uh, that's on one hand. On the other hand, you can reconstruct the climate on Earth and see a, when was it cold and when was it warm. Mm -hmm. And it turns out, a, surprisingly or not, that a, every so often, every about 145 million years, Earth enters an epoch of uh, glaciations. Uh, we have been in such a glaciation epoch over the past, say, 30 million years. We have been in such a, a glaciation epoch about 150, 160 million years ago, and so forth. So you have those appearances of ice age epochs on Earth mm -hmm. um, every so often, and you have a reconstruction of the cosmic ray flux, and you see that they align, that every time the cosmic ray flux was higher, there was a, an ice age epoch uh, on Earth. Uh, you can also, or you also expect to get variations in the cosmic ray flux because as we ro roam uh, the galaxy, as we uh, orbit the galaxy, we pass through the galactic plane like a, like a dolphin. Mm -hmm. And when we are at the galactic plane, we expect a higher flux of cosmic rays. And when we're further out, we expect a uh, lower flux of cosmic rays. If you look at the uh, geochemical records uh, of temperatures over the past uh, half billion years, uh, you cannot do it longer because uh, we don't have fossils which are older than that because uh, it's only since the Cambrian that we have a microscopic fossil. Over this half billion year time scale, you can very clearly see a 32 million year oscillation which corresponds exactly to what you would expect from the vertical oscillation of the solar system. So uh, you expect and measure a cosmic ray flux variations on different time scales from several days long to hundreds of millions of years. Mm -hmm. And every time you know and uh, or measure large variations in the cosmic ray flux, you see corresponding variations in the climate. Thank you.